Good afternoon, everybody. We'll start lecture today. Now, last week we have finished with the oral cavity. Now, today we'll start with a new subject, and this is the anatomy of the neck. Now, here in this slide, this is a picture of the neck. The left top, you see the head is elevated, elevated to show the structures in the neck for the surface anatomy of the neck. Now, the neck is covered with skin, just like any other part of the body. The skin on the anterior aspect, anterior surface of the neck, it's thin, thin skin, while on the back it becomes thick, thick skin. And mostly it fuses with the deep fascia on the back, while on the anterior aspect you can elevate the skin of the neck. <clears throat> now the structures which you can see and feel by inspection and palpation in the neck starting from below the mandible in the center, in the anterior medial line, if you descend your fingers starting from here downward, you can feel the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone, first, you can grip it between your two fingers, between the thumb and index from side to side, and move it. This is the only bone in the body, the hyoid bone, which is not attached to any other bone. Only muscles are attached to it. This lies midway between the base of the mandible and the other structure which you can see and feel. This is the laryngeal prominence can feel the thyroid cartilage and the laryngeal prominence, which projects more in male than in, in female and female. This is called sometimes in the surface anatomy, you feel the base of the mandible, of course, the hyoid bone, and then the laryngeal prominence. You can feel it very easily. In male, it's more bulging than in female. Sometimes this is called Adam's Adam's apple. A laryngeal prominence. This is just, just a joke. Now descending downward, you can feel you can feel the whole larynx. The larynx can be felt, and then below you can feel the the tracheal, the tracheal rings here. The S is tracheal rings, you can feel them below below the larynx. And attached to the larynx is the thyroid gland. This one, this is the thyroid gland, the two lobes of the thyroid gland with the isthmus. Now these two, when you swallow, when you swallow them into black, this moves, the larynx move upward, upward. When you swallow, the larynx move upward and the thyroid gland, which is applied to it, moves with it also. By this, you can diagnose any enlargement in the thyroid. When once you ask the patient to swallow, this should move. If it is in the thyroid, then it moves with the larynx. If it is, if it doesn't move, then this means it's outside the this structure. Next, below, then descending down to the suprasternal notch, which is a depression just above the sternum of the above the sternum, and then you can feel the whole length of the clavicle. Here, all length of the clavicle, you can feel it. You can pass your finger now over your own clavicle from this side, and then over the suprasternal, the suprasternal notch, this depression. Now, in the neck, if you turn your, your head to one side, then a muscle stands away in the other, other side. This muscle is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Once you turn your head to one side, then this muscle stands out, stands out from one, from the below the angle of the mandible down to the sternum. Is this one? This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So this is for the surface anatomy of the neck. On the back, the skin, as I said, is thick, is thick, and you can feel the muscles, but you cannot feel the spines of the cervical vertebrae in the midline, starting from below the back of the skull, 
ascending in the posterior median line. If you pass your finger, you can feel nothing. Until downward, you feel a bone. This is the spine of the seventh cervical vertebra. The first spine of the seventh cervical vertebra only can be felt. The rest cannot be, cannot be felt. So this is for the surface anatomy of the neck. And the neck, the boundaries of it, starts from below the base of the mandible upward and then pass backward to the mastoid process, external occipital crest and external occipital protuberance in the midline on each side. Then below the neck extends till the clavicle, this upper border of the clavicle and the manibrium sterni downward and from the back it passes continues from here to the back to the spine of the scapula and to the level of the third third thoracic vertebra this is considered all as neck structures now removing the skin the skin as so we remove the skin from this picture you see here the skin is removed from the anterior aspect of the neck to show the superficial fascia. Now in the superficial fascia, here you see this is a muscle. This is a muscle in the superficial fascia. Here you have fat in the superficial fascia. We have removed the fat to show this muscle. And here are the cutaneous nerves which supply the skin of the neck. This muscle is called the platysma. It starts from the superior border of the clavicle on each side. The two pass upward to be attached to the base of the mandible. And from here, these are the muscles of the lower lip. Now, we come to the neck. Now, this is, this is a cross section in the neck. So our neck, على شكل استوانة من جوا المانديبل downward لحد الكلافيكل استوانة استوانة وهذا هاي الصورة هي section by الاستوانة the transverse section through the cylinder to see the structures in the neck now this cylinder cylinder الخارجية is formed of three layers we have three three layers The outer layer, the outer layer, which is this one, the white one. This is the skin. أول غلاف الهاي الاستوانة الاستوانة بيات لتغلفة الاستوانة تبدي من below the mandible and the external occipital crest or external occipital protuberance above to the superior border of mandible and the spine of the scapula from the back. This is a transverse section of it. It's formed of three layers. The outer layer is the skin. The superficial features in the skin. This is the white one, is the skin, the outer layer of this cylinder. Now next to the skin, we have another layer to the inside of the skin in this cylinder. طيوانة من ثلاث أخطية تشيل السكن يجي غطاء لاخ اللي هو السوبرفيشيال فاشيا this yellow one the yellow one is superficial fascia this layer of fascia contains fat and that's why it's made in, in yellow within the superficial fascia on the anterior aspect you have a thin muscle this is a thin muscle which we have seen in the previous slide this is the platysma, the platysma, so it's situated within the, the superficial fascia of the neck. This is considered as one of the muscles of facial expression, which we have studied with the, with the face, and is supplied by the cervical branch of facial nerve. So this is for the second, second layer, it's formed of superficial fascia membrane containing fat, and contain in the anterior aspect on each side a platysma muscle, which extends from below to up, the base of the mandible to the, to the clavicle on each side. This is the second layer. 
Now, next we have another layer which covers the whole cylinder. This is the deep fascia, the green one. The green one is the deep, deep fascia. This is called the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Investing layer of deep cervical fascia. This forms again a complete covering of the neck. Is that attached superiorly, this deep fascia? Investing layer to the whole length of the base of the mandible till the angle of the mandible. From the angle of the mandible, pass toward the styloid process to mastoid process and back to the external occipital crest and the, and the external protuberance, external occipital protuberance. Downward is attached below, below to the whole length of the clavicle to the superior border of the sternum and from the back to the spine of the scapula and the tip of the third thoracic spine. So it forms again a complete covering of this cylinder between the angle of the mandible and the styloid process. This becomes thickened to form stylomandibular ligament, which we have seen that this from this extends into the face to cover the parotid gland, forming a false capsule for the parotid gland of you remember. And from there become attached to the zygomatic arch. Now this investing layer of deep cervical fascia posteriorly is attached to a ligament which passes over the spines of the cervical vertebra. This ligament is a thick ligament, it's called nuchal ligament. Nuchal ligament attached to the spine through all spines from above from external occipital protuberance down to the seventh cervical vertebra. This is the nuchal ligament. Now this investing layer of deep cervical fascia, again, it splits anteriorly on each side to fossil into two layers to enclose a muscle between the two layers on each side anteriorly. Chill one skin, chill the other superficial fascia. Be a adult and some men are platism. Jana, top of the third, which is investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Top of the fork, jaw of the mandible, and the jaw of the clavicle. Between the two layers. It splits into two layers anteriorly. It's a tabakdin, benatum, benat tabakdin, and quadal. It's a mere sternal clidomastoid muscle. The shovel high and posteriorly again splits to enclose another muscle, which is trapezius muscle. So two layers here it splits to enclose trapezius muscle. Anteriorly, it enclosed sternal clidomastoid. As a stewana, we have three layers. The outer layer, skin. Shield and the butt. Did you know another layer completely moon fog, mill base of mandible down to the clavicle? Kula. Kula last gauge. Superficial fascia. This superficial fascia, we have fat, we have platysma muscle on anterior aspect. This is one and this is one. Next, we have investing layer of cervical fascia, another layer which is thicker, which is the green one. Benata, anteriorly it splits. To enclose a muscle, which is sternocleidomastoid. The muscle you need to focus on the side of the face, the side of the head, you can feel the muscle coming out of the clavicle process down to the clavicle. Posteriorly, again splits to enclose another muscle, which is trapezius muscle. Between the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius, is only deep fascia here. It's only deep fascia here. Contains nothing. Now, let's open the deep fascia, the stewana here, and see it, see it, four small stewana. See it, four small stewana. One, 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 and one cylinder in the anterior aspect, ilia el violet. 
يعني اربع اسطوانات محطوطة داخل الاسطوانة، الاسطوانة الخارجية متكونة من 3 layers هذا هو الاناتومي اوف ذا نيك الاسطوانات الاربعة البوستيرير This is again all derived from fascia, deep fascia. This one, the posterior one, we call it portacalia chibira, posterior half of the neck. This is called the pretracheal, sorry, prevertebral fascia, prevertebral fascia. The two small orange ones, one on each side, these two. Cylinders, we call them carotid sheath. Carotid sheath. The other cylinder in the anterior aspect, the violet one. This is the pretracheal fascia. Pretracheal fascia. So the whole internal structure of the neck is formed of four cylinders. One lying in the posterior half is called the prevertebral fascia. Two, one on each side anteriorly. These are the carotid sheath. And then we have one anteriorly is the pretracheal fascia. Is it clear now? So, we have a, an outer, whole anatomy of the neck, a cylinder. The outer cylinder is formed of three layers, skin, then superficial fascia containing platysma, then we have investing layer of deep fascia containing anteriorly two sternocleidomastoid, posteriorly two trapezius muscles. Then inside the internal structure is divided again into four cylinders separated from each other. The posterior one, which is the largest, this is the prevertebral fascia, enclosing all these structures. Then on each side, we have the carotid sheath, the small orange one. Interiorly, we have the pretracheal fascia. Each of these cylinders contain a number of structures of the neck, which extend from above down till the lower aspect of the neck. They become continuous with the thorax. Above, they become continuous with the head. Now, the prevertebral fascia, from its name, is anterior to the vertebral column. This fascia, this cylindric, Cylinder in the posterior half contain the cervical vertebrae. This is one of the cervical vertebra, this section. Seven cervical vertebra, the fogel loch, with intervertebral discs between, between them, and the vertebral canal inside. The vertebral canal contains the spinal cord, which becomes continuous with the brain through the foramen magnum of the skull. Seven vertebrae. Anterior to the vertebra, we have a number of muscles. These we call them prevertebral muscles. Don't bother yourself with their name. These are prevertebral muscles. Back to the, the posterior aspect of the vertebrae, you have again three layers of muscles. Superficial, middle, and deep, deep layer of muscles. You see, this is a superficial layer. This is the middle layer, and this is the deep layer of muscles. All these muscles, we call them back muscles, back of the, of the neck. Three groups of muscles, superficial, middle, and deep group of muscles of the back of the neck. So this prevertebral fascia contains contains the back muscles, three layers, the prevertebral muscles, the vertebral column, the seven cervical vertebrae, with the vertebral canal containing the spinal cord and the spinal nerves emerging from it, from first to the eighth cervical nerves. 
خلصنا من الاسطوانة اللي بيها البري فيرتبرال فاشيا اللي بيها الفيرتبري والسبينال كورد انسايد ذا فيرتبرال كانال والنيرفز and then it's surrounded by muscles on the back three layers and on the anterior aspect you have a layer of prevertebral muscles now on each side we have the carotid sheath two small cylinders they extend from the base of the skull down to continue into the this is the carotid sheath two carotid sheaths, one on each side. The carotid sheath contains neurovascular bundle of the neck and it contains nerves and vessels with lymph nodes and lymphatics. The carotid sheath contains common carotid artery, which then divides into internal and external carotid artery, the red one. The blue one is the internal jugular vein, which drains all the veins from the head and descend down into the thorax. Contains lymph nodes, cervical lymph nodes, and contain vagus nerve. The yellow one is the vagus nerve. This is the content of the carotid sheath on, on both sides, on the right and on the left. The two are the same. We have two carotid sheaths. Now next, the last cylinder inside the neck is the pretracheal, pretracheal fascia. The pretracheal fascia encloses, encloses the viscera of the neck. We have in the face and the nose, which leads to the pharynx, the oral cavity, which we have seen, it leads also to the pharynx. Then the pharynx, together with the larynx, the respiratory tract continues and the GI tract continues. The larynx and then the trachea, and behind it, pharynx and esophagus of the digestive tract. Oh, these are enclosed in the neck within this pretracheal fascia. Here we have the larynx or below it becomes trachea and behind it is the esophagus behind the pharynx and below it becomes becomes esophagus and anterior anterior is the larynx and become the trachea anterior to the pharynx or esophagus again applied to the larynx we have the thyroid gland which is applied and enclosed within this pretracheal fascia. So the pretracheal fascia contains the pharynx and or esophagus, and then larynx and below is the, is the trachea. Attached to it is the thyroid gland, or the therapia. Between the pretracheal fascia and the investing layer of cervical fascia, we have, we have flat muscles of the neck, infrahyoid muscles. These, they form two layers, two layers of flat or strap, strap muscles. So this is the whole anatomy of the neck. I will repeat it again. What you have from the outside is the, the whole neck is a, like a cylinder. This cylinder has three layers or three covers. The first one, outer one, is the skin. Remove the skin. Another cylinder comes off superficial fascia containing the platysma muscle. Removing this, you another cylinder, which is another layer of this large cylinder which is the deep fascia or investing layer of deep cervical fascia. This anteriorly contains sternocleidomastoid on each side with trapezius muscle on posterior aspect on each side. تفتح cylinder الكبيرة تخلص شيل deep facial three layers تجيك four cylinders. 
واحدة محطوطة posterior to the back شبيرة and then anterior you have two small on each side and واحدة on the anterior median line four cylinders أربع استوانات داخل الاستوانة الشبيرة the last one posterior one شبيرة بالداخل هي prevertebral fascia which contains the vertebral column pre-vertebral muscles and muscles of the back formed of three layers. On each side, two small cylinders, we call them carotid sheath. Kul carotid sheath be a neurovascular bundle of the neck. To the arterial supply, jib vein, be a lymph nodes, and lymphatics, the common carotid artery with internal carotid artery, internal jugular vein, vagus nerve, and lymph nodes. The last cylinder is the pretracheal fascia, which contains pharynx, esophagus, posteriorly, anteriorly larynx and trachea, enclosing what it is the thyroid gland. And here to this, we have the strap muscles of the neck. So we have studied the surface anatomy. We said that we can find the thyroid eminence, the larynx, the trachea with the hyoid bone, and the suprasternal notch. And if you turn your head, you can feel the sternocleidomastoid muscle on the back. If you pass your finger on your back of the head, and then descend towards the neck in the center, you will feel a projection. This is the external occipital protuberance. And then when you descend downward, you cannot feel anything in the midline until you feel a bone in the base of the neck. Back, this is the spine of the seventh cervical vertebra, which we call it vertebra prominence. Now, on the lateral side of the neck, here on the lateral side, sometimes you can see the external jugular, jugular vein. You can feel the pulsations of carotid artery, but the slide I'm going. You can feel the parotid pulse here. If you put your finger, that has the larynx, laryngeal prominence, and then you pass laterally anterior to sternocleidomastoid muscle, put your hand there, you can feel pulsations of external carotid artery. Has the nabadat man the external carotid artery parallel to the upper border of thyroid cartilage of larynx anterior to it. Lift your eyes up on the surface. You can feel the external video mastoid, the laryngeal prominence, and then anterior to external video mastoid on the same level. You can feel the pulsations of external carotid artery. Now, removing the skin, can I just do one and share the skin with it? We have superficial fascia. This is a thin lamina covering platysma, and you cannot separate it. The platysma is a broad, flat sheet of muscle within the superficial fascia that arises from fascia covering pectoralis major and deltoid in the thorax, crossing clavicle and descend into the neck. It's inserted to the base of the skull, sorry, of the mandible, and some ascend to the, to the angle of the mouth, which we call it modulus, passed on ascend over the masseter to attach to skin of the lower face. Deep to it passes external jugular vein. This muscle, as I said, is one of the muscles of facial expression, so it's supplied by cervical branch of facial nerve. Now, next, removing the superficial fascia, we come to the third layer of fascia, which we call it investing layer of deep cervical fascia. This lies internal to platysma, covers muscles and other structures. Now, the investing lamina, or layer of deep cervical fascia, this forms a collar around the neck. And with the stewana, a collar, talk, around the neck. This forms a collar around the neck. This is the third layer. 
posteriorly, as I said, it's attached to the ligamentum nuchae and spine of seven cervical vertebra. Encloses between its two layers, trapezius posteriorly, and covers posterior triangle of the neck as a thin. Splits anteriorly to enclose sternocleidomastoid muscle and reunites at this anterior border a single lamina covering anterior aspect of the neck and attached to symphysis menti to the body of hyoid bone. As the superior leaf fall, this face attached to from the back to the superior nuchal line to the mastoid process, styloid process, then form stylomandibular ligament to the angle of mandible and to the whole length of base of mandible. This ligament, the stylomandibular ligament, as you have seen, it splits to enclose parotid gland, forming a false capsule, and then fuses to the zygomatic arch. We call it sometimes parotid fascia. Now, inferiorly, inferiorly, this cylinder is attached to the acromion process of the clavicle, the whole length of the clavicle, and the manubrium sterni. Above the manubrium sterni, it splits into two layers, superficial attached to anterior border and deep attached to the posterior border. Between them is a slit-like suprasternal space, contain lower part of external jugular, anterior jugular veins, jugular arch, and the lymph nodes between the sternal heads of sternocleidomastoid muscle. Over the posterior triangle, this splits to enclose inferior belly of homohyoid, blends with fascia around the subclavius, and attached to posterior surface of clavicle and anterior end of first rib. These are the inferior attachments of the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Now we come to the internal cylinders. We said we have four cylinders inside the investing layer. These are the pretracheal, two carotid sheath, and prevertebral layer. The pretracheal cylinder of deep cervical fascia from its name is anterior to the trach. This is thin fascia limited to anterior part of the neck, extends from the hyoid bone to superior mediastinum. So it blends, descends downward into the thorax and fuses with the fibrous pericardium of the heart. A layer encloses the pretracheal muscles, which are the thyroid, the, the strap muscles, which you have seen them anterior to the, to the trachea and the larynx, and the visceral layer encloses the thyroid, the trachea, and esophagus, and this continues posteriorly and superiorly with the bucopharyngeal fascia of the pharynx. Forms the intermediate tendon of amohyoid, the tendon and sling of intermediate tendon of diagnostic. We will see these later on. Now next we have the prevertebral fascia, the lineal posterior, the largest. This forms a tubular sheath for cervical vertebrae and associated muscles, lineal, prevertebral, and back back muscles. Extend from base of the skull till the level of third thoracic vertebra. It blends with the anterior longitudinal ligament. Extend laterally as axillary sheath, and the sympathetic trunk is embedded in it. Next, we have two carotid sheets. Carotid sheets. These are tubular facial investment extending again from base of the skull to the root of the neck. Contains common and internal carotid arteries, internal jugular vein, vagus nerve, and the cervical lymph nodes, carotid sinus, and periarterial sympathetic nerves. The alar fascia, now if you go back to the, to the picture, to the section, 
you see from, from these cylinders, this is the outer, yeah. then you have the second and the third, the green one. Then you have, this is the prevertebral, the two carotid sheets and the two carotid sheets here with the, with the pretracheal. This space behind the carotid sheath and anterior to the prevertebral, this is called the retropharyngeal space. It's a space here in the neck, benal stewantin. Benal stewant out. Sometimes there is a, a, another facial sheath which divides it into two portions, but it's not present in all the persons. This we call it alar fascia. This retropharyngeal space, farah, this allows allows for distension of the pharynx. We don't have any alarms. When tackle the lugma food, as it was the pharynx, had the tens of tens of lugma. This space allows for distension of the pharynx and esophagus during swallowing or during deglutition. And this contains some lymph nodes which are retropharyngeal lymph nodes. So this is the retropharyngeal space, and this space is continuous with the thoracic with the thoracic cavity. Now I have changed the slide. We pass to facial spaces in the neck. Spaces between these cylinders. Carotid sheath will pretracheal sheath dial cylinders. They communicate freely and freely with the superior mediastinum. <coughs> that is the, the thoracic thoracic cavity. And superiorly, carotid sheath will pretreat this continuous with the cranial cavity. You know, internal jugular vein, internal carotid artery, they enter inside the cranial cavity. These communications represent potential pathways for spread of infection. An infection in the cranial cavity, on can use the carotid sheath, we use the southern to the superior, to the superior mediastinum. A retropharyngeal space, which I said is between the pretracheal and the prevertebral fascia behind the pharynx. This is the largest space and formed of loose areolar tissue between prevertebral and the pretracheal and bucopharyngeal fascia. Again, infection in this descend downward to the thoracic to the thoracic cavity. Spread of infection in the neck, it has already had the neck, according to these. Next slide, it was spread of infection in the neck. Again, shifna layers shown in the balastiwanat, the investing layer, it prevents spread of abscess in the neck. If an infection occurs between investing and that surrounds infrahyoid muscle, it does not extend beyond superior edge of manubrium sterna. You know, the fascia fuses there with the manubrium sterna and with the clavic. Baritropharyngeal space descend downward to posterior mediastinum. Now, if infection occurs between investing and pretracheal fascia, it can spread to superior mediastinum and anterior to pericardium. The posterior aspect of prevertebral fascia, this might bulge and form swallowing in the laterally in the neck, posterior to sternocleidomastoid muscle. It lies behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Pass from this prevertebral fascia might perforate and then enters retropharyngeal space. And when there is pus in the retropharyngeal space or abscess there, khuraj, then this presses over the pharynx and prevents, prevents or leads to narrowing of the pharynx, prevents dilatation during swallowing, lead to dysphagia and this arteria. So, <coughs> 
we call it dysphagia. And the trachea ruptures, which lies within within the pretracheal pretracheal fascia, then the trachea be air. This might spread into the neck, in the neck, because this is continuous with the superior mediastinum. It leads to pneumo mediastinum. Pneumo, it means air, and mediastinum is the upper part of the thoracic cavity. Infection posterior to the esophagus, again, can enter to the posterior mediastinum. Infection anterior to the trachea, again, enters anterior mediastinum. This is because we said the pretracheal fascia extends down to the superior mediastinum and fuses with the pericardium. So infection there, pus, descends by gravity to superior mediastinum. Now, lateral muscles of the neck, these two muscles, just we have seen that within the investing layer of deep cervical fascia, we have two muscles. Anteriorly, adenoid sternocleidomastoid, or posteriorly is the trapezius muscle, enclosed between the two layers of the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. This is to show we have removed the skin, the superficial fascia, and the deep fascia to to see the muscles and within the deep fascia. We said we have two muscles, or the sternocleidomastoid, which is this one, and the other posterior one is the trapezius. And on this, which is dissected, this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and this is the trapezius, trapezius muscle. Both these muscles are enclosed within the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. We have left these cutaneous nerves and the external jugular vein. The sternocleidomastoid here, and this is the trapezius, trapezius muscle. The trapezius muscle, this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now, the sternocleidomastoid muscle arises by two heads, one from the manubrium sterna here, and one from the sternal end of clavicle. The two heads unite, unite with each other, and they ascend upward to be attached to the mastoid process. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and this is supplied by 11th cranial nerve, by accessory nerve. The trapezius muscle is large, large muscle, very large, flat muscles. It arises here from the superior nuchal line and external occipital protuberance on each side. It descends downward, downward, and also arises from the whole spines of cervical vertebrae and the upper six thoracic vertebrae. The fibers of it descend downward and those from the lower to be attached to the lateral one-third of the clavicle and to the spine of the chromium process and the spine of the scapula on each side. The two muscles, they leave the sternocleidomastoid and the anterior border of trapezius here. They leave between them this area, which is covered by investing layer of deep cervical fascia here. But from the muscles, we have removed it. These two muscles, they divide the neck into triangles. One anterior, which is called anterior triangle, and one posterior here, posterior to sternocleidomastoid as the posterior triangle of the neck. Now the slide is over trapezius. So the trapezius is large, flat, triangular, superficial muscle of the back. It originates from the medial third of the superior nuchal line, external occipital protuberance, ligamentum nuchae, spinous processes of 7th till T12 vertebrae, lumbar and sacral spinous processes, inserts into lateral third of the clavicle, acromion and spine of scapula, supplied by accessory nerve, the motor supply for it is from accessory and sensory is from C3, C4. The action of it, it elevates, retracts, and rotates scapula. To test it, shrug shoulder against resistance. And you choose shrug shoulder. Put, put your shoulders or your hands on a, on, on a wall, on a wall, and push, push forcibly so that you can test this trapezius muscle. Next, we have sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is the key muscle in the neck since it divides the neck, as I said, into anterior and posterior triangles. 
as long strap, strap-like muscle origin, sternal head from anterior surface of manubrium, clavicular head from superior surface of medial third of clavicle. Insertion is inserted into lateral process of mastoid process and lateral half of superior nuchal line. Nerve supply, as I said, spinal accessory, which is the 11th cranial nerve. It tilts the head laterally when it moves the head laterally, flex and rotates the neck, acting together, both of them, they flex the neck. Sometimes this is muscle, muscle during, during birth process, it might become injured. We call it congenital, congenital and then blood accumulates inside it and become contracted and shortened, shortened. This we call it. We call it torticollis, torticollis. Sometimes it becomes spasm, severe spasm in it, and then your neck might pass and stop to one side with severe. This is muscular, muscular or spasmodic torticollis or skull dry neck. Neck through the safha, but not able to reach it. because of severe pain and spasm in the in the sternocleidomastoid muscle.